believe that the show has a higher calling. I just think this is going to be a game changer. This show's not about me, it's about God, it's about how he impacted the world. Jesus is playing a whole other game. And we go out and they're all screaming for all of us. It felt like we were rock stars. Comparing season one to two, we've leveled up like... Now, season two is about the consequences of the publicity that surrounds Jesus and his followers. And are these followers ready for it? It's all fun and games when Jesus calls you and you feel so uh, empowered and excited and humbled to be called by Jesus. But then when the trouble comes, are you ready for it? Disciples are heading into Samaria for a few days to stir up some trouble, create some, a little bit of a holy chaos, as it were. James and John aren't too pleased about doing that. They're not too fond of the Sumerians. This isn't like you thought, you think it's going to be easy to stand right alongside Jesus, but you're going to have to go through this village and you're going to have to face these issues that you've got in, inside you. And James and John aren't too fond of the Sumerians. And so there's that trepidation of, my goodness, I so badly want to be right next to Jesus, but there's like some lava I have to cross to get there. Don't lift a finger. That was a warning. Try it again and see what happens. Quiet, Big James. Shalom to you, too. <laughs> or, uh, Big James and John are, are kind of uh, trying to lead the group and trying to basically say, you know, this is kind of the way we should go about it. I don't know if I'm, I want to be the leader as much as I don't want to be told what to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I just, the whole situation of other people telling me what to do, I think, uh, is just new, <laughs> you know? That's the errand. Oh, yeah? That's the errand? Yeah. You guys are really enjoying this, being in the know, huh? <laughs> Coming from you, Simon? What does that mean? There's nothing more at the surface than the relationship between Simon and Matthew. That tension is, in many ways, a representation of tension for all of the disciples. And he said that we would stay here for two days, which means over 24 hours, the number of men we need to reach per hour is 83.33333333. Yeah, what's point three three of a man? Matthew Simon. We're starting to see the egos come into play here, which is very, very human. Especially when you get a group of that size. You know, there's like a honeymoon phase and then <laughs> and then people start to get to know each other and get to irk each other and and uh, and Jesus is in the middle of it going, ah. I can't forgive it. I'll never forgive it. All right. You said what you needed to say. Sit down, Simon. You sit down first. Good night. All of the contention, the bickering, the fighting, the differing points of view, that was like a feast to me. I was so excited. I'm enjoying the frustration and confusion. I want conflict. I want dilemma. I want uncertainty because it's just fun to play and to explore as a human being and as an actor. And that's where the humanizing aspect of it comes in. Like you see all these people and what I think all of us love is, what I love is that they're not perfect. But I think it's important to show how, how you can manage it and how you can work through it, and how important it is to have loving people surrounding you, and how they can help you in that, and, and how to reach out to them when you need it. And hopefully, this show will cause us, and this season will cause us to give grace to each other. Wow, before we even start, before we even find our new group dynamics, new people are joining in. Each person brings an entirely different energy and pulls in a different direction, so the group is kind of shaping. Well, we knew that for season two, we had a huge task ahead of us, which was the team's not complete. And how to, so how do you assemble 12 disciples? 
how do we keep this thing interesting when we're picking up disciples that aren't really famous for much? Like the the famous ones, you know, a bunch of stories are told about them, like Simon and John and Big James and Matthew a little bit and for sure Thomas. But we only have these like little fragments about people like Philip and Nathaniel. He's only mentioned in the Bible a few times. With the writers, they give you this whole backstory. That's really refreshing, but also I think that's what connects the audience to it and what, what connected me to it. It's a gift. You're, you're beautiful, beautiful actor. And your soul comes through in these two. Wow. You have a beautiful soul. Thank you for pulling so. me aside and telling me that. Of course. People were very, you know, nicely say, I can't wait to see who you're playing. I can't wait to see your work. My answer is like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so impatient. Once I'll be able to just say it and be like, and put a, a Zorro Z on my, on my chest and be like, you know. <laughs> Meaning it, it looks like something you put on to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like good. innocent. That's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, You don't look like a killer. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. You know, it's being shown now why Jesus chose these specific archetypes uh, for their specific flaws to be shown so that they can be worked out, so that they can be eventually alchemized. Yeah, I just want to make sure you're contrasted with the other people in this scene who are having more serious conversations, and I don't want, okay, I don't want you to feel heavy either. I want you to feel, you always feel like the... Like, always in a good mood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially a guy who's trying to, he's asking for help, you know? That's a great thing. This is what's so freeing about a show. The freedom that we have to take our time in developing these characters over multiple seasons. If we would have tried to fit in Matthew's journey from death to life or from broken to healed, from confused to clear in 90 minutes, um, it wouldn't have worked as well. And, and we would have had to make a movie just about Matthew. And to be able to explore this kind of character and show from where he started from like the bitter guy behind the tax booth saying next, 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 and to just slowly evolving with the facial hair, the new look come, going on, and just you're seeing his heart, you're seeing his personality. I do think that as you're helping her, it should still be functional helping, not necessarily comforting. Okay. You know what I mean? I think comforting is maybe one step too far for Matthew at this point. So moving her hair out of the way, you know, he's still not sure. I think helping her is one thing. Comforting her is, might be yeah. might be one step too far at this point. And so I thought it was important to show, like, okay, you've been redeemed, but it's still an ongoing and daily effort to stay in a state of peace. He already fixed me once. not joining the fray, not joining the fight, but at a certain point you have to join the fight. To see Andrew muster up uh, the courage in those moments to stand up for what he believes in is really, really fun to play. Just start smaller there and just, you got, you got plenty of time to build up. Okay. It, yeah, felt, yeah. it felt like you just got there so fast and then okay. it just became a... Is it all right if I big... get to the place when I'm like, left us starving at camp for two days and, and, and by then I'm, I'm built up, but if I start smaller? Well, the reason that, the problem was when you said starving for two days, you were at full 10. Okay. And then you had to go, or put Jesus on edge and it, it felt, okay, it yeah, felt yeah. awkward. And you know, these are people that have flaws, they have obstacles, they, you know, they get irritated in certain situations, they're, they're joyful about certain situations. They connect differently with, with other people, um, they're human. With every series that has the opportunity to last long enough, there's always going to be this sort of evolution or kind of settling into a character. My wish is always to go further and to try to understand and know the heart of Jesus more deeply. I think that's gonna be delightful for the viewers. I think it's gonna be delightful for the people watching when they can see that Jesus is playing a whole other game, right? It's something beyond, right? Corporal affairs, <laughs> he's Jesus, right? He's talking on another level. I'm saying I don't know what to make of you. That's going to be a lot of people's problem with me. No more bones, Jesus, follow me. No more draining my talent pool, creating spectacles, crowds. No more meddling. Hmm? 
I cannot promise any of these things. Ryan and Tyler in Dallas are now writing for us as actors, as opposed to just characters. They're more comfortable writing for us as people, and uh, and that just makes for a better show. In the in the in the wider take, um, I really liked when you played the Vipers thing even lighter. You're kind of chuckling a little bit, like I heard about that. Tell me about Do you know what that means? I really like that. So okay. let's let's go back to that. It's just okay. even lighter. It's just it just plays well. We have really amazing writers. There's no moments where you think to yourself why and how because everything is there. Everything is laid out so beautifully and it makes perfect sense. We're all unified behind you. You're all unified. We all agree on you. But sometimes you're away and during those times we don't have your authority to defer to. We have my instructions. We have a goal or instruction or someplace to go but how we get there how we achieve it. Sometimes there's a lot of noise. It makes the work so much easier when you have these images already laid out for you. You got blood on your hands. One more. There we go. I'm a mess. Good. What would I do without you, Ima? The reason that the show is is working and, and will hopefully continue to work is because the audience feels an authentic connection to these people. And the only way that's going to happen is if they see a little bit of the actors, at least some of the actors, in these roles. So go ahead and give that some... No, it's damp. Like, really, you know... Like, when he says, no, it's wet. No, it's damp. Like, just lean into it a little bit. Wet is the incorrect word to use <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> it is actually damp. Dallas and I have not agreed on every thing, but that's not really as important as the response to that, which from him has always been like, okay, well then let's hash it out. Let's figure out what the best way to proceed is. Uh, my job is to show up every day and just put my ideas to the side and just surrender to the moment and, and bring my authentic self to the situation. Action. As this project grows and as we grow within the characters, I think that it'll, it'll be like a, a Venn diagram almost. Like there will be not just J Big James and Abe, but Big Jabe. <laughs> a young man that has cerebral palsy as well, and his is even a little more severe than mine, and he said it meant a lot to have that representation on screen. If I had your uh, struggle and I was watching what was happening today. I demanded. I don't know if I should. It just doesn't feel right. Most of the time, people can use their differences or their disabilities or their limp or whatever their limp may be. I think people can use that to inspire and to help, like to use as a tool to help others find purpose or faith. The willingness of my castmates uh, to be there to be with each other, to check in on each other, that goes, that goes further than anything. Uh, and I don't think you can teach that will. You can't teach people to care about each other. You can ask them to, but when it's just born of them, that's something else. That's really special. I haven't seen anyone showing up on set in any department uh, and just showing up because it's their job and they just have to go through the day and get it done, and they look forward to Friday. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's not like that. It's like when, when we work, we work, and it's like these big smiles, you know, whether you see the smile or not, but like there's, it's this attitude. Man, like an hour after being on set in, in Utah, I knew I could relax and just be me and just be an actor. And because everybody from the cast to the crew, every, everybody is so welcoming makes your job easy because all you can all you have to do is focus on being an actor the more takes we do you might start to feel a you know a, an urge to or maybe a temptation to feel like it's a long scene we're all waiting we've done it so many times people might be getting restless like get rid of all of that and just settle in and be present and don't worry about any of what i was just talking about you know just relax and and have a have a conversation, we're gonna do it lots of times, and each time I want you to just be feeling totally supported 
in, in, in the patience that's around you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. That's kind of like what your the dream is, like working on projects that look good and they turn out great, uh, but you also have a ton of fun doing it. The connection you have with the other actors, the, the, what you get to build, that's my favorite part. And any project I've ever done, I haven't gotten this as close as I am to this cast. It's just a great time. Everyone's just got great per personalities. Everyone's so different and you're, there's, you just laugh. Off screen and within the scenes, there's a generosity among actors where we want to help each other. We, we don't want to steal a scene or we don't want to, you know, there's just, there's a care. There's a real care. The show's not about me. I might be playing Jesus, but I'm, it's not about Jonathan Rumi or anyone else. It's about God. It's about how he impacted the world 2,000 years ago and, and will continue to impact the world. Jews and Gentile at this table? What would have to happen for that to be possible? Something will have to change. Again, for the next couple hours, heavy emotional scene, quiet scene. Let's really, in between takes, do our best to keep it down, activity-wise, jokey-wise, all that stuff. Just really be present for the next couple hours. That'll be very helpful to me and extremely helpful to the actors. So thanks again. Working on a Dallas Jenkins film is like a complete blessing, whether it's The Chosen or a small independent film. It's always filled with love, I guess. I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. I'm not in this business just to make a show or make movies or use actors and crew members for my own means. I feel like it's a calling to, to be Jesus to people. We all want to create the same good product, and I think he's really good at communicating per person how to get there, how to create that, that thing together. Look around, see all these men. Um, I think it can really register that you're in a room by yourself with these guys instead of the disciples. And that's, that should be Simon, that should be Matthew, that should be, you know what I mean? Take your time. I trust his good taste. I feel like that makes me work a little easier. I know he has my back. Look at these performances and that gives you an idea of how strong the director is because they are allowed to do anything that they feel in the moment. And that doesn't happen unless you have a good relationship and you trust the director. And trust is way stronger between friends than it is between boss and employee. That's a line where you can feel free to be more engaged, you know, like you don't have to be looking at her, but I'm just, that's where you can really express yourself. This is why this is important. I don't know if I'm going to see these people again. Like, so it's okay to take your time and really lean into each of those words there. Make sense? When he watches the scenes on the monitor, he's so in tune. I have to admit that he really is, his game is stepping up because he's noticing the most nuanced little things that I'm, do, I can only say for myself, personally, things that I do. And then when he says it, I kind of realize like, you're absolutely right, I did have that thought. He knows what he wants in a shot, which is crucial, I think, for any director. But he gives us and allows us the freedom to kind of play, and he's open to discussion. Where even if it's not written into the script or something like that, we can maybe throw a little bit of improv here and there or, you know, do something that we want to do. Everyone is so passionate because I think Dallas is very strongly passionate about this. This is like clearly his lifetime project. He knows exactly what he's doing it for. It comes from a place of instinct, much more than uh, control. Again, in the, in the plan, they don't know who you are yeah. in the plan. And so you're not trying to hide your face. You're not trying to no, pretend no, 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 that, yeah. I mean, you're picking up your thing. So it's okay to like sure glance at them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's not really a reason for you as the, as the citizen to stare at them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. kind of what you're saying? So even right. this gesture needs to be very discreet. Um, yes. Because yes. They're still looking yes. Delsa is pretty good at this directing thing. Um, I'm hoping he he continues, uh, you know, learning. Every new episode just keeps getting meaner and meaner. Well, it's been painful, um, fairly excruciating. Not really crazy working with him. It takes a lot of energy, man. I mean, he's terrible. He's the worst human being I've ever met in my life. Um, I just I hate seeing him and his face every day. Action, next group. Action, you guys, go ahead. All right, you guys can start walking this group here. Go ahead. 
Okay, this section, go ahead, start walking. All right, now everyone, let's go. To take something that, that 2,000 years later is still considered, or still known as the most famous sermon in history, and the words that changed history, the words that were so radical, and we get a chance to kind of recreate it and deliver it again to the world, to way more people than just Jesus was speaking to in that time. We were all kind of like emotional, like backstage getting ready for the big, big shot, you know? And so there's all these thousands of people out there and they look great and they sound great and they're excited and they're cheering. They probably could have CGI'd it and it would definitely, they would find a way to really make it work, but this was so much more powerful. It's not done anymore. You, you look at these movies from 40s, 50s, and it's 2,000 people when it says 2,000 people. There are 2,000 people who have flocked from all over to listen to the words of Jesus speaking up. I mean, there were people showing up from Washington, D.C., Washington, San Diego, uh, Virginia, Michigan. So they're all here backstage as he's about to get ready. So, so right now, let's just bring him out. So guys, come on out. We got everybody. And you look out there and you see this massive crowd and, and we go out and they're all screaming for all of us. It felt like we were rock stars. I felt like, you know, the Rolling Stones or something. And it's just, I, 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 I couldn't stop smiling. I, I literally couldn't stop laughing and smiling. It seemed to me like all these people are calling out your name and know you and so much love. It's like you have this wave of like love and good energy coming to you. All right, listen up very carefully. You know how a lot of times in these types of movies, when someone comes out on stage, everyone cheers or everyone stands up. We're doing the opposite, okay? So you guys will be talking to each other. You'll be milling about. When Jesus comes out on stage, you'll all start to slowly see him and you'll all sit down. And that's gonna be the final shot of season two. The crowd is there placed and then we have to do a camera rehearsal just to make sure it goes the way it's supposed to go. And so the first time I'm going through it, I open it up and just like, like a sea, and it's like, whoa, and I had to turn around. So it just, it really, uh, I knew it would, but you, you don't necessarily know exactly when it's gonna happen until it actually happens. Action! I'm just excited to see it, but it's definitely a challenge, but a welcome challenge at the end of the day. And it was a, it was a day, it was a moment. It was overwhelming. I mean, it was just like, it represented so much, so much pain and effort to get us here, but then so much love. It also represented God, and again, doing the impossible, his impossible math. It's great to be a part of something that has a good message. It's great to be a part of something that helps people. There are so many people that it's changed their lives. And isn't that the point of great cinema? Even people that don't believe in anything watch it and are hooked. You can't say that about a lot of things. That's how you know you got something special. Just being able to meet so many people out there that are saying like, thank you for what you're doing. You're changing lives. You're the reason why I feel more awakened in my life. You're the reason why I'm chasing after things I want to chase after now, and I'm closer to God because of that. So many people love this show so much, and we love that they love this show so much. This is such a dream project for me. And then on top of that, it's, finding out the impact it has on people, where it's, it's bringing them hope. I, I, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful for that, you know? A little girl just came up to me who was probably 13 tops, and she starts crying, and she says, last 
year I was literally about to commit suicide. (laughs) And I've watched episode one in Mary Magdalene's story, and it just she starts. She's like, she's like, she's like just watching Mary Magdalene's story and how Jesus came to her, and it just really, it's it literally saved my life. And I still. (laughs) But yeah, she was. She, I mean, she was like this tall. I'm like down in her face. Yeah, it was amazing. So. <laughs> you can, oh, Mary Magdalene cries all the time. You can cry for this one. I genuinely believe and know that every cast member that we have is here for a reason. I can't tell you how many cast members have said that when we cast them, they were going through something difficult, whether it was a spiritual crisis or a career crisis, or they were questioning whether or not they belonged in this business. It's happened multiple times. Hey, listen up, everybody. Literally tens of millions of people around the world are gonna see the work that you've done this year and this season. And I'm very grateful because you've made me so much better and you've made the show so much better than it could ever be. And I really appreciate it. And that is a wrap on season two of The Chosen. I love my cast. Amanda and I feel such a huge love for them and we feel like we're in the foxhole together. I genuinely, I wouldn't do it with anybody else.